as of this morning, Half as Interesting is now six years old. And according to Scholastic, six is usually around the age that children develop the cognitive ability to distinguish fantasy from reality. But our six-year-old is apparently a little slow because Half as Interesting is still guilty, like any semi-educational YouTube channel, of occasionally accidentally saying stuff that is not quite true. So, in our annual tradition, we're going to do what any good parent would do on their child's birthday. Meticulously berate them for every single mistake that they've made over the past year. Now, without further ado, here are the year's worst mistakes. In last year's mistakes video, I cited this mistake where I said that the Everglades were full of alligators when in fact they were full of crocodiles. Well, it turns out that neither of those was exactly right because it's actually the only place on Earth that's full of both. Check back next year to find out what I got wrong about the Everglades in this video. Sol Samari, Summers, Philip Schlafy, Chala, Lancaster, Porsche, 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 Porsche. These are all words and none of them were pronounced correctly. This calendar suggests that February of 1943 started on a Sunday, when in fact it started on a Monday, that it had 29 days, when in fact it only had 28, and also that it somehow started on the 3rd, which has never happened in the history of months. And actually the basis for this whole graphic is wrong because the 47 day ban on sliced bread that's being highlighted here ended up lasting 49 days. Whoops. In this video I said, From 2002 to 2004, the US military invested $5 billion in over a decade of research developing this camouflage pattern. Now, I'm no scientist, but I'm pretty sure that 2002 to 2004 is only two years and a decade is at least five. In our video about why there are no ambulances in Jerusalem, I used the Western Wall as an example of a place that couldn't accommodate an ambulance. But this was a pretty bad example because the Western Wall can be accessed by car, bus, and yes, even the occasional ambulance. According to Rule 29 of their super secret playbook, that number is 19. It says it right there, 19. I accidentally said Rule 29 because that's what it says on Wikipedia, which is wrong. Rule 29 of the playbook has nothing to do with the disaster draft and is actually just reserved for if they ever come up with a rule that will make baseball interesting to watch. The Toki Pona video has so many mistakes that I actually can't list them all, but here are some of them. Toki isn't derived from the English word talk. It's actually derived from talk pisin, a Creole language spoken in Papua New Guinea. This shouldn't be capitalized because nothing except for loan words are capitalized in Tokipona. This translation of Poki Lohe Lon Sinpin Li Poki Tawa is actually way off and means something closer to the red boxes on the wall are moving boxes. And finally, pretty much any time I said any Tokipona word in that video, and probably this video, I mispronounced it so bad that everyone in the comments wanted to throw wall boxes at me. In our video about cardboard cops, I described the amygdala as almond-like. What I should have said is that it is roughly the size and shape of an almond, not that it is like an almond. It is in fact nothing like an almond because almonds cannot process memories and amygdalas cannot be delicious in a chocolate bar. This math is wrong. In December of last year, I described this system, where the US wrote down 763 words and assigned each of them a number, as the worst cipher in military history. But it turns out that it's not the worst cipher in military history because it's technically not a cipher at all. It's a code. In order for something to be considered a cipher, each letter or word would have to be automatically shifted or jumbled using some kind of algorithm instead of just being manually assigned a number. The worst cipher in military history that is actually a cipher, by the way, is probably the Caesar cipher, used by Julius Caesar. All it did was shift each letter three numbers forward, so A became D, B became E, and so on. If you wanted to steal Caesar's military secrets, all you needed to know were all the letters of the alphabet and the number three. This video shows London being bombed by American planes instead of German planes, which didn't happen, at least not on purpose. In our video about the Mississippi River, I said that the river being diverted away from these cities and into the Atchafalaya would leave Baton Rouge in New Orleans without drinking water. Now, while New Orleans does source its drinking water from the Mississippi River, Baton Rouge does not. They source their water from the underground Southern Hills Aquifer, which requires much less treatment than river water, and positions Baton Rouge to be the next beignet capital of the United States if the Mississippi ever dries up and everyone in New Orleans dies. And a 24-year-old Abraham Lincoln was actually the postmaster of New Salem, Illinois. This is the wrong New Salem, Illinois. It turns out there are two New Salems in Illinois, and Abraham Lincoln was the postmaster of this one. Finally, our last mistake of the year. We said that Truman passed the Atomic Energy Act of 1954, but he didn't. In fact, he wasn't even president in 1954. Eisenhower was, and he was the guy that passed it. Shout out to Dwight Eisenhower. So there you go. Another year of misinformation, mispronunciations, and misses in general. If it makes you feel any better, Half as Interesting will be sent to bed early, and I will eat the entirety of his birthday cake by myself while he cries alone in his bedroom. Happy birthday, HAI! 
Now, while we might say a whole bunch of facts that aren't true, here's a fact that is true. While you were watching this video, your name, address, and social security number, your demographics, your online shopping habits, and a whole bunch of other information about you were being stolen. Not by me, that sounded like a threat, no. They were being stolen by data brokers. But fortunately, you can put a stop to that with our sponsor, Incogni. Now, for those of you who don't know what data brokers are, they're basically for-profit organizations that scrape the web for personal data and then take all that information and sell it to, well, whoever. Data brokers are responsible for all those spam calls you've probably been getting, not to mention how easy stalking has gotten. One way out of this is to throw all your devices in a river and move to the woods. But if that doesn't appeal to you, the other way out is incognito. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf and keeps your information out of their databases. They automatically deal with objections, follow up if more of your data gets added, and monitor multiple broker sites to keep you in the clear. Doing all that manually, by yourself, just one time would take years, but with an Incogni subscription, it'll be handled constantly, automatically, and with no effort for you beyond signing up. If that sounds like a good deal, sign up for Incogni today and use code HALF AS INTERESTING at the link below to get an exclusive 60% off an annual plan.